is a status epilepticus and why this status occur, how it affect the human body and different human system and how it was defined and what are the recent guidelines. So we will try to find out the answer of what, why, how and now. So, what is a status epilepticus? If uh, we say as in a common language, so a status epilepticus is basically a abnormal brain discharge. And uh, to define it accurately in a medical terminology, it has goes through various phases. So how it was defined in our old definitions, it was defined as a convulsive seizures, the seizures which is having a motor activity like limb jerking, either that seizure could be single or multiple and it was lasting for a more than 30 minutes. So remember, more than a 30 minutes, the convulsive seizures of a more than 30 minutes, it was one of the old definitions then this definition evolved and it was decided if the convulsive seizures of single or multiple and it lasts for a more than 15 minutes so the time duration was reduced then uh, again the single instead of a single seizure or a multiple seizure of a prolonged duration it was decided a series of a seizure in which there is no complete restoration of consciousness is a status epilepticus. So these are the old definitions of a status epilepticus. So seizure of a 30 minute duration, then revise of a 15 minutes duration or of a irrespective of duration the seizures without restoration of consciousness is defined in an old definition as a status epilepticus. And the current definition is, it is revised. So I will let you know why the revision was required. So if a seizure, if it is last for more than five minutes, is defined as a status epilepticus or two or a more discrete seizures whatever the duration is but if there is a no recovery of consciousness in between is called as a status epilepticus so either if the seizure is of 30 seconds 15 seconds or two minutes and the seizure is stopped but child do not recover completely is normal mental alert needs and then the second seizure occurs this is called as a status epilepticus and to add on more to decide the treatment any seizures any child who is brought to the emergency room with seizure should be treated as a status epilepticus regardless of the prior duration so uh, the in the upcoming slides we will discuss what is the important of reducing this time duration uh, so in this uh, uh, slide which is depicted on a screen right now the international league against epilepsy in 2015 revise the definition of a status epilepticus and here I would like to uh, uh, discuss about the words which are depicted in red uh, uh, the time point the time point one which is a five minute duration so any condition in which there is the failure of mechanism which is responsible for a seizure termination or the initiation of any mechanism which leads to the abnormally prolonged seizure of time point one which is the five minutes duration 
so uh, the reason of this timeline is that it was noticed the initial definition of c status which was about the 30 minutes or 15 minutes and it, this was found that this prolonged duration of a status epilepticus duration leads to the irreversible damage already so then it was required to act early so in a research base it was found that for the first five to ten minutes it's easy to control the status rather than give a prolonged duration of 30 minutes why because a condition that can lead to a long-term consequence the time point two so beyond 30 minutes is the irreversible damage to occur irreversible damage in a way of neuronal death neuronal injury or change in a function of neuronal network so status epilepticus is as we uh, discuss is uh, any seizure of a more than five minutes duration or a too discrete seizure in which there is no complete recovery of consciousness or any child who brought to the emergency department with the active seizure is treated as a status epilepticus. The status epilepticus can be a refractory, right? So we call it as a refractory status epilepticus when it does not respond to the adequate dose of emergency and urgent medication. So this refractory status is a status which can be a clinical convulsive status or electrophysiological on the EEG recording, right? So any seizure which persists beyond the 30 minutes is now called as a refractory status epilepticus. And status epilepticus can be a malignant status epilepticus, which is a severe variety of refractory status epilepticus. Usually it persists more than 24 hours and it does not respond to a aggressive treatment with anesthetics agent also. So the medication terminology which we use for the treatment of a status epilepticus is emergent medication to abort the status and really the three common drugs are used for this uh, emergency situation which is benzodiazepine, lorazepam, diazepam and midazolam and emergent medication, the urgent medication, the classical uh, uh, prototype anti-epileptic which include the uh, phenytoin, phenobarbital and valporic acid, levetacetam and the refractory, the refractory medications are usually anesthetic agents. So why it is important to uh, know about the status epilepticus. So we discuss about some uh, epidemiological data about the status epilepticus which shows that it is a common condition, right? So here is the data of US which shows in adult population the occurrence of a status epilepticus occurs 40 per 1 lakh adult per year. And why it is important for a pediatric patients for a pediatric because the large number of status epilepticus occurs in the pediatric age group. So if we compare it is five times of the adult uh, population. So for the first year of life in an infant the status occur about in 147 per 1 lakh children for the first year of life. So it's 147 per 1 lakh infants, which is about five times of the adult population. And majority of the status in children occur during the first five years of life, almost around 64 to 85 persons. And uh, um, as we all know, the pediatric age group is range from uh, uh, of from the first year of life to the 18 year. So 64 to 85 percent of the status epilepticus occur in the first year of life. There are so many reasons behind this and it 
बिकॉज ऑफ ऑल्ट्रेशन इन फंक्शनल कैपेसिटी ऑफ डिगेटिक न्यूरोनल एंड नेटवर्क एंड द रिड्यूज रेशियोड ऑफ स्टेटसिकस इन चिल्ड्रेन राइट सो द मोस्ट कॉमन स्टेटस एपिलेप्टिकस विच अकोस इन चिल्ड्रेन इज द फेब्राइल स्टेटस विच ऑलमोस्ट अकाउंट फॉर ट्वेंटी फाइव टू फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेस and the very important slide which shows the common etiological factors or uh, common trigger for the status epilepticus the most commonest among that is a fever fever could be due to any cause the most common cause in our scenario is infection and uh, the which is the 36 percent cause of status epilepticus so, and the change in the drugs and uh, the metabolic causes like hyponatremia hypoglycemia hypocalcemia and more error of metabolism the congenital causes congenital causes like uh, neuronal migration disorder structural malformation cortical dysplasia and uh, like uh, parents uh, family issues and so family so there are so many causes of uh, uh, congenital malformations which leads to the status epilepticus anoxia it could be a birth anoxia and anoxia due to so many other causes and there are the list of long list of other causes of status epilepticus uh, uh, so few antibiotics can uh, Uh, leads to the status epilepticus like amsley nasonius is apoplexis and so on many anesthetic drugs uh, are, uh, can be the cause of status epilepticus like halothene fentanyl ketamine and uh, other uh, psychopharmaceutical like antihistamines antidepressants and so on so what is the cause of status epilepticus why the status not occur in a routine because normally the balance is maintained between a excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitter so if we recall that there is a loss of control uh, of phenomena which leads to the termination of seizure or there is a stimulation of the phenomena which leads to the uh, uh, seizure so either there is a reduce in inhibitory neurotransmitter or either there is a increase in excited neurotransmitter leads to the status of the lepticus so inhibitory neurotransmitter if reduced like a drugs and a slim or uh, certain uh, antiepileptic drugs uh, sudden tapering of antiepileptic drug when there is reduce in inhibitory neurotransmitter there is a status or uh, excitatory neurotransmitter the anything which leads to the excitatory neurotransmitter leads to the in, uh, status epilepticus so the commonly the inhibitory neurotransmitter is gaba and the excitatory is glutamate so this is a very important slide which we need to uh, Uh, understand that as we recall the status epilepticus has been changed uh, in definition so initially it was a 30 minutes duration 15 minutes duration now it's uh, uh, we can size to the time duration the time by now about a 5 minutes duration so status epilepticus is having a stages and the early phase which is a stage 1 the stage 2 is the established phase stage 3 is the refractory phase and the stage 4 is super refractory or a malignant phase so why this stages and with this timeline is important because early the management good the control is and less of the uh, Uh, multi organ involvement and consequences are not irreversible if it is early control so early phase of status epilepticus is the first 5 to 10 minutes it is called as a impending status epilepticus or premonitory status epilepticus 
this and uh, this is the time period in which we use uh, emergency medicines to stop the status to abort the status epilepticus these emergency medicines are benzodiazepines like metazolam lorazepam and diazepam the commonly available is diazepam and midazolam the lorazepam is not available in an injectable form and then the second stage of a status epilepticus which is established status epilepticus 10 to 13 minutes this is the phase of a status epilepticus in which the compensatory mechanism of human body is yet functional so the long-term consequences or irreversible consequences are yet not occurred. So one should have to intervene in a premonitory or stage phase one stage of status epilepticus or establish the status epilepticus. Beyond that, the control of a status epilepticus is difficult or if it is controlled, the consequences are permanent. Stage 3 is refractory status epilepticus, which is stupid status epilepticus, and its time limit is beyond 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes. And this is the reason that the classification and definition of a status epilepticus was revived because in an earlier deficiency uh, definition, the time limit was at 30 minutes. And it was found in a surviving patients that they have a majority of them have they have a long term consequences, right? Because the neuronal damage, neuronal death or network functioning alteration has already occurred beyond that time. So stage three is a refractory status epilepticus, stage four is super refractory malignant status epilepticus severe form of the status uh, 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 refractory status epilepticus so this is the stage in which the conversions uh, continue despite the treatment with anesthetics for more than 24 hours so, what happened in a human body if the seizure persists? If for the first 30 minutes there is a compensatory systematic changes, then there are decompensatory systemic changes which can lead to the multi organ involvement and the bad consequences of death. Okay. So, for the first 30 minutes, as we discussed, there are compensatory changes, right? So, uh, and then beyond that are decompensatory phase, right? So, the two phases of systemic response to status epilepticus in the first phase won't happen. There is increased catecholamine surge, increased cardiac output, increased cerebral blood flow, increased glucose in the brain because the metabolic demand is also increased because of a persistent sudden uh, burst of the neuronal discharge so the brain cell requires more uh, energy for this high metabolic demand and this is compensated for the first initial compensatory phase so the cerebral energy requirements are matched with the oxygen supply and glucose so whatever the requirement is that is provided by the compensatory mechanism but if it is status buzzes beyond that 30 minutes it leads to the decompensation what happened then the cerebral autoregulation failure so increase intracranial pressure the metabolic problem hyponatremia hypoglycemia hyperglycemia hypoxia, hypoglycemia, leukocytosis, hypotension, decreased cardiac output, DIC, multi-organ involvement. So one should act early during the compensatory phase to stop the status and stop the development of decompensatory phase. So what is the 
systematic response of uh, status epilepticus. It commonly affects all body systems, but the most commonly involved systems are the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system. So in a respiratory system, if the status persists, it leads to the hypoxia and hypocardia. So poor ventilation, why? Because of chest rigidity. The continuously muscle contraction leads to the spasm. So it leads to the poor ventilation. Metabolic problems occur because oxygen consumption, uh, consumption is increased throughout the body and carbon dioxide production is also increased. So uh, the poor handling of the secretions due to continuous uh, convergence so it is, uh, this is another uh, uh, factor for hypoxia and hypocarpia, neurogenic pulmonary edema. So uh, any seizure, any status with hypoxia is more dangerous than seizure without hypoxia. So hypoxia and noxia leads to the significant increase in mortality. So this is the respiratory involvement with the status epilepticus. If it does not start immediately, it leads to the hypoxia, hypercarbia, hypoxia and hypercarbia uh, is having an increased risk of mortality. So status or a seizure with hypoxia is more dangerous than a seizure without hypoxia. And this emphasizes the oxygen uh, inhalation or uh, when ABC was managed, the given oxygen to uh, given oxygen to a patient who reached to the ER with the status. What is the cardiovascular uh, involvement of a status epilepticus? So, as we discussed in our previous slides, that the early manifestations lead to the sympathetic overdrive, and sympathetic overdrive lead to the uh, uh, increased heart rate, tachycardia, high CVP central venous pressure, hypertension, and the late manifestations are there is exhaustion. Right, so the exertion of this sympathetic cry, which leads to the bradycardia, hypotension, hypoperfusion. So, this is very important slide which needs to be uh, learned. So, what are the cerebral hemodynamics when there is a seizure? So, this is the timeline in a uh, x axis. So uh, uh, when the seizure is started, what happened? This black line indicates that the oxygen requirement increased. And because of a compensatory mechanism, this blood flow is also increased as shown in a red line. But after a certain time point, the oxygen requirement remain high. But because of a decompensation, this red line, that line, that means the blood flow reduced to the cerebrum, the brain. And as due to compensation, this blue line represents that the blood pressure initially increased. It remained increased for the first few minutes. Uh, then there is a decompensation so there is a tack line in a blood pressure so blood pressure blood flow reduced but the oxygen requirement remain high so initially in a compensative phase of cerebral hemodynamic which is a hyperdynamic phase the uh, cerebral blood flow continuously exactly the same of cerebral metabolic requirement of oxygen. So in a hyperdynamic compensatory phase, CBF, cerebral blood flow, meets the CMRO2. But in exhaustion phase, the cerebral blood flow drops, hypotension sets, autoregulation exhausted, and then what happened, which is shown in a red but that the neurological damage occurs. So this damage can be in the form of cell death, cell injury, 
are alteration in a cellular network of brain so functional capacity can be changed what are the biochemical indicator of status epilepticus so the blood leukocytosis which may develop in a 50 percent of children and even in a lumbar puncture csfdr leukocytosis can occur in true percentage of children so because of a continuous seizures the potassium can be increased due to muscular breakdown so uh, the potassium from intracellular compartment is comes out in an extracellular compartment similarly because of persistent spasm muscle contracture there is increased cpk myoglobinuria which can lead to the renal shutdown and there is increased cerebral uh, pressure stress cardiomyopathy due to continuous contraction there may be a bony fracture right? So there are certain investigations which can be done, so the intervention can be done to counteract the effect of a status epilepticus. So in blood, the complete blood count, glucose, calcium, magnesium, UC, NFT, ABG, CSF biochemistry, urine, DR, microscopy, CT, EG. So what to treat? So one should remember this, the time is important. As we discussed in a revised uh, 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 definition of a status epilepticus it is defined now a five minute duration because we learned this that with the continuous seizure there are so many irreversible damages right and as the seizures continuous will uh, continue it leads to the difficulty in control so early to intervene the time is important so quick treatment of a status epilepticus is the key higher the efficacy of anticonvulsant better the outcome every minute delay in a treatment of a status epilepticus leads to the 5% cumulative increase in the risk of having a status epilepticus last in more than 60 minutes that means a status of malignant type refractory status so this is the same uh, timeline phase which is depicted in a uh, arrows right so one should act within a five minutes give uh, emergent medicines right and which is the time one t1 beyond t2 there is the higher chances of conversion of a status epilepticus into malignant or refractory status epilepticus. What are the key components of management? Initial stabilization, the ABCD, respiratory and cardiovascular support. Give the high adequate doses of emergent medication and then urgent medication identify and treat the underlying cause as we uh, discuss in etiology the fever is the most common cause the, among the other causes uh, uh, the metabolic causes can be the reason pharmacotherapy for seizure termination and identify uh, and treatment of underlying cause identify and treat systemic complications like hypoxia due to respiratory issues ventilation perfusion mismatch so give oxygen inhalation right or uh, systemic complication like hypotension give a uh, iv fluid resuscitation or uh, inotropes of course if required sometimes and the neuroprotective measures so these are the five important categories of management of uh, status epilepticus which include initial stabilization drug therapy for a termination of seizure, the pharmacotherapy which included emergent and urgent medication, identifying treatment of underlying cause, 
identify intrusive systemic complication and neuroprotective measures for zero to ten minutes timeline what we have to do we have to manage a b c airway breathing circulation and it's uh, recommended to place the nasogastric tube if it is not already in situ because of the risk of uh, uh, aspiration choking and secondary to vomiting and uh, Decide about assisting through ventilation when there are chances of hypoxia. Close monitoring is required and investigation. So, emerging medications, as we talked about, uh, midazolam or diazepam or lorazepam, one may repeat it every five minutes to avoid the seizures, right? And then urgent medications are the classical antiepileptic, which is levetisetine uh, and phenytoin. That should be started immediately after when the seizure is not aborted by an emergent medication. So, if child is convulsive status epilepticus, it is recommended after the start of a uh, urgent medication and beyond 10 minutes but it can be uh, intubation can be done earlier if there is clinical indicator of hypoxia right so so if seizures continue it's more than a 30 minutes one give an emergent medication to stop the seizure and then when you start with the uh, urgent medication, uh, give the loading dose of this medication, which is commonly used a classical prototype of anticonvulsants, injection phenytoin, injection levetacetam, phenobarbitone. If the child is having a fever, give antipyretic, continue strict monitoring. Metabolic causes should be identified. So, if there is hypoglycemia, the blood glucose should be corrected. Hyponatremia, it should be replaced. Sodium should be replaced. Hypoglycemia, give an IV calcium. Right? So, and other uh, uh, um, urgent medication is valvoric acid, which can be given. And Particularly for a children of less than two years of age, IV pyridoxine is required because it is found that the pyridoxine dependent on deficiency status epilepticus is common or one of the entity in a children less than two years of age. Okay. And one important thing is the patient is known epileptic and already taking certain medications. So it is better to give the urgent medication, loading dose of the same medication that the child is already taking. Suppose if the child is already on a valvoric acid, it is good to give the uh, loading dose of valvoric acid rather than a levetiracetam or phenytoin. Okay. So beyond 30 minutes, if the status epilepticus is converting into a refractory status epilepticus, so continue start with the anti-epileptic or proceed to a pharmacological coma. Right now, this status is turning into refractory status epilepticus which is difficult to control so which required a large number of urgent and emergent medications plus induction of a midazolam or pentobarbital trauma and for this status the continuous EEG monitoring is required invasive hemodynamic monitoring is required so commonly required medications is midazolam phenobarbital are that anathiastic agent, right? So, 
the most commonly used is midazolam well for the refractory status epilepticus. It should be given in a bolus 0.2 mg per kg. Then the infusion is started for 1 to 2 microgram per kg per minute. It should be continued till the seizure is stopped or electrophysiological burst suppression pattern achieved or till we reach the maximum dose. And we have to continue the midazolam coma uh, for uh, 24 hours of a seizure free interval, and then we start capping on it. Okay. And with the midazolam coma, this is important to continue on medication drug, right? So, uh, uh, urgent medications so, uh, oh, oh, long term uh, classical and epileptic will be so other uh, options for uh, anesthetic agents are thiopental, propofol, ketamine, isoprofen. What are the neuroprotective measures which we learn in a management? So neuroprotective ye hai ke oxygen saturation should be kept more than 94%. Volume status should be a normal volume, right? Uh, so a hypotension has a bad consequences, decreased cerebral perfusion. So you volumic state should be maintained. And uh, hypovolume and hypotension should be avoided. Better to keep the systemic blood pressure uh, at the 90 or 95th percentile. So the partial pressure of PCO2 should be maintained 30 to 35. Uh, higher the PCO2, it leads to the vasodilation and raised ICP as we all know. Sodium uh, should be maintained on a higher level. Head and neck position should be at 30 degree. Why? Because it increases the cerebral venous drainage and reduces the chances of raised ICP. So, and temperature should be of uh, 33 or 35 degrees centigrade. Glucose is in a normal glycemic level, not hyperglycemia, not hypoglycemia. So, what is the prognosis of a status epilepticus? Uh, it has 3 to 10 percent mortality and uh, it depends on the duration of the seizure there are chances of subsequent epilepsy 20 to 40 percent chances of secondary epilepsy following the status epilepticus and in a 6 to 15 percent of the children encephalopathy like uh, change in the cognitive stage, learning deficiencies, uh, hearing and visual problems or something else. Focal neurological deficit in 9 to 11% of patients and refractory status occurred in 26 to 28% of patients and obviously when the status is refractory, its prognosis is not good and its long term consequences are more. So, what is the conclusion? Aggressive therapy is required for the management of a status epilepticus as prolonged seizures are less responsive to therapy. The longer you wait to administer anticonvulsant, the more anticonvulsant you will need to stop seizure. The prognosis of patients who have a status epilepticus depends not only on the underlying cause but successful treatment of the seizure. So what is the important message? Act fast. Intervene early. Intervene during the impending status epilepticus state. When it is established as status epilepticus or when the decompensation occurs, it is difficult to control and having a more bad consequence.